What's up, Stormwatches? And uh, I mentioned this in my uh, tribute to uh, Steven Hillenberg. And, well, pretty much I had this uh, video, like, in thought and in, in, uh, in, in, in development for, like, a long, long time. Well, not exactly development because I'm saying it now. But I guess this is the quote-unquote finished product, product or something. But uh, I know I may be a little late on this, but, you know... One of my, um, you know, most famous quotes from, you know, Akachan no Tatsumaki, one of the greatest philosophers of all time. I'll get to it when I get to it, literally meaning, you know, when I get to it, I'll get to it and then I'll fucking do it. That's pretty much the mindset I had. And and because of it, I was kind of stalled on uh, actually reviewing uh, Burn the Witch. And now that I've uh, read it, uh and whatnot, I think it's uh, I think it's appropriate for me to give a thorough review on it and whatnot. Um, for a start, uh, I, 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 I pretty much endure the traditional or modern day uh, Taikubo, Taikubian, <laughs> ty, uh, uh, Taikubian or Kubian uh, art style that's going on with it. Like, there's actually you know rigid edges and. Things are a bit triangular and things are only round and around, you know, around when they're around. Like things actually, you know, are like the fingers or, you know, certain background set pieces are, are overly or circling when they need to. Because, you know, in modern day uh, art, especially in Western art, uh, a lot of things always seem to be really plushy and cutesy and round. Now things really have a lot of sharp edges and whatnot. And they're starting to become even more apparent in, in modern day anime. So I was glad to actually finally read something uh, where I read something where the art is actually has more uh, dimensions than just cir circulation and, and, and roundness and plushness. I mean, if you count, you know, uh, Noel's uh, jugs being plush, then, you know, <laughs> I, I guess you could count that. But no, seriously, though. Uh, it pretty much first opens up with, uh, you know, the waifu that anyone keeps fucking slobbering about over the internet when this comic came out, Noel, uh, which people also call Gender Ben Biakia because she's a coo dairy and her hair is really similar and they're pretty much the exact same character, although she's not a total dick, but, yeah, you know, like trying to kill her sister and whatnot. But yeah, but that's, that's the point. Uh, pretty much it opens up with her... Uh, more or less going back to to the dragon world from from reverse London. Yeah, I'm kind of uh, bobbly about the lore. I mean, it's still in there, but some things kind of, you know, slipped a bit because, you know, I had other shit to do. I was occupied by it. I really didn't have enough time to actually even read the, the, the comic alone, but I still got food, of course. I mean, I wouldn't be giving this, this review if I didn't, but, you know, things are still bobbly. They're not 100% clear, but I still read it. And I still, you know, got to adjust the just the, the flying colors of it to make this review. Um, pretty much opens up with her leaving the human world. And she and, and she goes to the West Branch, which apparently is the West, the West side of the Soul Society. Which is great because it actually expands more onto Bleach world building and whatnot. Which is pretty much one of the main selling points of the Soul Society of why it made it so good. Like, while on Earth, we drive cars while they ride boars and chariots. On Earth, it's more modern uh, modern day era, while the Soul Society is more feudal, Sengoku Jidai-esque Japan style to it. Uh, we fight, with, we use guns, they use swords, you know. So, yeah, I feel like the Western branch kind of more or less uh, uh, builds more onto uh, Bleach's world building. And I kind of like the, the overall introduction of that. I mean, a whole lot of people still have a lot of questions of how it would fit into the world, into the Bleach world, because we all, for a long time, only thought there was just one soul society, but there's also East and there's West. Uh, I guess if we probably see a sequel, uh, probably not. Well, I hope so, because Burn the Witch itself was forever in itself really interesting. So I hope they, if, if, uh, 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 Taikubo does uh, build onto it in the future. We see more of uh, Burn the Witch in the future. I, I would like to see how it, it fits into the whole Bleach world and whatnot. 
So I, I can just only just say until it comes out, if that is if Ty Kubo actually wants to expand on it, then we'll know for sure how it fits into everything. Uh, yeah, that is sad. The world building is great. I like the introduction of West Branch, although it does brings a lot of questions to Bleach's lore. So that, so they got, got me there on that. Actually, overall, I like the concept of it. Uh, I also like the fact that in West, the West Branch Soul Society, they mostly deal with dragons, while the East actually also deals with spirits and hollows and whatnot. So, you know, it gives a sense of depravity of their objectives and what they do, you know, actually make it seem different. Like, like it, that's that's good at world building. If, if I mean, the thing about world building, pretty much one of the most important concepts of storytelling, especially with fantasy, uh, if you want to actually make, do good world building, you have to make, you know, this said different uh, setting that you're introducing to the overall story more indifferent, seem more indifferent. The language, the culture, the religion, how they dress, how they do things. Like you actually have to put a little more TLC in the world building. It can't just be another setting with a, it can't just be the same setting with a different title smacked onto it. You actually have to, you know, put blood and sweat into the, into world building and the concepts of world building to make it seem indifferent enough, make it seem like it's its own location, its own setting. So, and I feel like, uh, Ty Kubo actually did a good job on it. Uh, uh, okay, <laughs> I know I was getting off topic on world building, but that's pretty much one of the most important things, especially in fantasy uh, writing and, and, and literature and whatnot. It, it opens up with Noel, more or less going to the West Branch in this really Doctor Who-esque like phone booth. <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, in, this, uh, <laughs> in this Doctor Who-like phone booth, uh, uh, Teleporter, more or less, where it zip all the way from uh, from uh, from London to the West Branch, like simultaneously. And while you know the story continues, we they more or less more or less give an exposition, more or less to like what's going on and whatnot. And you know her daily job, how she's you know not really a student, she just like to wear uniforms. Like I was really just baffled at first. I'm like, oh god, it's gonna be another fucking school anime. But I read, I was like, no, oh, oh, no, it's not. It's actually not. She just likes wearing school uh, outfits. Same thing with uh, Spangle, uh, if I'm if I'm pronouncing it right, Nishi Spangle. Uh, more or less, uh, even though Hiori actually looked, you know, how she aged. That's pretty much who Spangle is. Uh, she's a tsundere, just like uh, just like Hiori, and you know, she's bossy and whatnot, shit. And she's uh, just uh, she's dressed just like uh, like Noel and whatnot. And uh, I feel like I feel like those two together actually make a good uh, tr uh, 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 what's, a duo. Yeah, I say trio. They make a good duo. Uh, how they uh, pick off the story. Uh, I had the impression when I was reading like it had this really buddy cop like concept to it. This really. Uh, noir uh, thing to it and it kind of does in certain places like a fantasy noir or something like that here and there uh so yeah i did like that and her uh, boss who with the mustache i kind of i'm kind of uh, glitchy on their names y'all so i do apologize <laughs> but no uh, their boss more or less she, he reminds you just like you know the, the boss and the noir to the detective He's giant, he's fat, he's bossy, he got the mustache. Well, he's more slim. But I think that's that's what his character more or less, how he fits into the story. I mean, it's a little uh, uh, noir tropes, I would say, but it still, it's, it still was good enough. It still fit in, it was still acceptable. It, it wasn't completely bad. So I did also like the introductory of that character in, in particular. And how I'm pretty much the 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 the, the, the elite force of uh, dragon tamers, uh, dragon witches that that tame uh, dragons. They pretty much said, "Oh no, they're off for vacation, so we're gonna off you two bitches off to uh, take care of the dark dragons, which is pretty much the evil versions of regular dragons." Because in in the West Branch world, the dragons are pretty much their livestock. Like people use them. For teleportation, or or farming methods, or 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 harvest, or plant life and whatnot, it has this really how to train a dragon concept to it, which was also cool because I really liked it. How to train a dragon? I like the overall concept of how to train a dragon, the story and whatnot. So I feel like there were some elements in there, 
and whatnot. So yeah, also kind of like the fact that goes back to world building. I like what they what they do with it. Like Ty Kuba actually does something with it, you know. So yeah, that's pretty good. I, I kind of like the concept of it. Uh, and then we uh, more or less uh, the 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 the, uh, the story more or less transitions to um, his brown hair guy who looks a lot like uh, Time Skip Ichigo when he was an adult. Uh, <laughs> like I said, man, I'm really... <sighs> I'm really iffy about the names. Well, not iffy, just... I'm really... Uh, the names don't really clog, uh, clog up, you know, they don't really wash up in here to kind of kind of slip my mind. Okay, uh, Brown Hair Ichigo is uh, pretty much the cone. So, yeah, the comic relief of the series uh, has this blue comedy concept because that's what kind of comedy Cohen is. Co uh, Cohen is blue comedy. He's the slapstick. He's comedy for the kids. And that's kind of what brown hair is for uh, Burn the Witch. Uh, and he has this really long tendency throughout the manga that he just, that, that he just wants to see uh, uh, Noel's panties. In it. And, you know, it kind of happens more or less throughout the, throughout the comic and towards the end where uh, more or less that little dragon dog yeah because that's where they get there's it got this really man in black thing where uh, most of the the, the, the the black dragons the dark dragons the evil dragons uh, more or less slip into the human world and they take on these human disguises just like men in black and pretty much the main antagonist that we uh, further know on in the series is um uh, this guy who looks like Ichigo's dad, who's uh, a caretaker of uh, Brown here, Ichigo, for a long time. Because uh, Brown Ichigo uh, died like a couple of years back, so he's a spirit. And uh, more or less, just like Men in Black, the disguise, the human disguise came off. And they came out as, you know, the true form. And, you know, they took him down and whatnot. Yeah, I know I'm giving a speed through uh, production, but yeah, that's pretty much what it was. And I kind of like the fact, just like I said before... With world building, you actually got to make it seem different, the culture and religion and whatnot. And uh, I kind of like the, the, the witch's weapons of choices. You know how they say witches always have, you know, uh, a wand or something or a staff, but their wands are like guns. You know, the stereotypical uh, depiction of wands with the star at the end, just like very odd parents. Uh, it's pretty much a whole gun. It's a whole gun. But where the barrel is, it's a... Uh, it's a star, just like a wand, and I kind of like this the spin they put onto it. So, yeah, I kind I kind of like the the spin they put onto it. The wand has these really strong gun aspects and looks to them. So yeah, that was really great. I kind of like the concept of it, and uh, the more or less that little dog they were taking care of. Yeah, that's one of the a, a, a hidden dragon in the world, but I think he was fine. Uh, he feed the dog that uh, Brown each girl carries with him. More or less feeds off a. Of, uh, uh, Brown each goes uh, uh, memory and, and and things he thinks about and thoughts and whatnot. And throughout the whole series, he more or less makes an ass out of Brown here by pretty much like uh, like uh, telepathically saying what he's thinking about the situation, like what he thinks about what he really thinks about Noel and whatnot. Uh, and, and, and although a whole lot of people actually have their spites about uh, about uh, Brown Ichigo. I kind of was a bit annoyed by him. I'm not even gonna lie, but I kind of felt I kind of feel like he was still a necessary uh, character, or you know, he's gonna be an eventual character if the series actually ever kicks off. Uh, he was somewhat funny. He got a little annoyed, but that's really just as far as it goes as him as as a character. So I wasn't completely just shitting on him. I just he was fine, I guess, but he wasn't. He's not as mind numbing as mind numbingly as annoying as Cone, but there were some coughs about him that just made me want to hurl. But over that, I think he was susceptible. Uh, I've also mentioned like how uh, how uh, uh, Burn the Witch is written. It has these really strong uh, English quotes and all this and and, 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 and slang and, and, and uh, diction and, and Webster to it. Like there's a lot of it in, it's a lot of it in this there's a lot of it in this uh, in this uh, one shot, and it's like really, there's a lot of it, and I found it really cool. Like like it's like, well, oh, that is if Taikubo ever been to England, uh, I kind of like that he that it, it was like Taikubo literally just 
took the culture with him and put it in this manga. Like, he actually, you know, broke down the walls, came out and went to England, if he did, I'm saying, went to England and uh, 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 slept the, the elements in this uh, in this one shot. So I kind of feel like, you know, he actually wanted to make it as authentic as possible instead of just, you know, making the ass out of himself, like, bloody, bloody hell, oh, bullocks, oh, what, what? Like, you know, like the really stereotypical uh, English slang, because, you know, not all English people talk that way. And I kind of feel like he made it more authentic where he actually did, you know, look for real definitions and words, you know, they actually say and then just simply just say it from something he saw from England or something. He actually, you know, dived into it because in the past, uh, Ty Kubo was always not, was, is always known for uh, providing a lot of real world culture aspects aside from Japanese into his uh, story. Uh, the, 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 the hollows, the wrong cars, mostly surrounded around uh, Espanol, uh, Spanish, <laughs> and uh, and the Quincy's is more uh, surrounded by uh, uh, by uh, German and, 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 and Juda Judaism in, in this uh, text and whatnot. And for a while, he actually wanted to make the Fool Bringer surround more around England and London and whatnot. And I guess, you know, he really couldn't kick it off and whatnot, and he had a really short time making the Fool Bringer socks. So I guess he... Uh, more or less pushed what he had what he had planned for the Fool Bringers into uh, Burn the Witch, uh, which explains why is this really English heavy, the culture, the, the the jargon and whatnot. So yeah, kind of like how he pulled that off, more or less. You can see where where he put it where he put it, knowing that Bleach did it. So he's like, I got all this shit. I'll just put it in here. So you can see where you know he actually did put his foot into this manga to make it seem as authentic as possible when relating to uh, England's culture and, and, and how they speak and their jargon and whatnot. So I did really like that. If I haven't already said it before, just restating shit and whatnot. That's, that's pretty much about it, about that concept. Uh, well, that's, just, that's really pretty much I got to say about it. I mean, there are some things like, like, like it was so, it was so English jargon heavy like, I honestly actually had to go to, like, a, like the dictionary of Webster. Well, not Webster, just to see what some words were about. Just, like, Clockwork Orange. I was really uh, English jargon heavy. And while I was literally looking at Clockwork Orange, I had to go, like, on an online dictionary just to see what they were talking about. Like, Sal and all that. And, you know, all that stuff. And that's pretty much what I had to do for, uh, from, for Burn the Witch. I should be like critiquing it like I don't understand this shit this shit just don't make any sense but I kind of see where Kubo actually tried to make it as authentic so I'll let so I'll let it pass I see, I see where you was trying to go on with uh the only thing I guess the only thing really actually I'm gonna have to say about uh Burn the Witch though bring it down is uh yes yeah, it's, it's choppy jargon but I still let it pass because he tried to make it as authentic as possible and Burn the Witch has this really, like, really odd pacing, I would say. Like, it literally jumps to A, to B, to G, to Z, to double Z, quick. The pacing is just kind of off. I mean, they still explain things here and there, but I just feel like it was just, like, like it was just, like, really badly paced in, in terms of how the story transitioned. But, and... and I feel like they could dumb down a bit on the exposition. They could just do show and tell. Uh, show and tell is one really important thing about world building. Show and tell instead of just blabbing everything. Like let me let me invest myself. Let me Im Im immerse myself into the world while having it pretty much be given to me on the platter. You just show me, and I'll, I'll I'll make out what I see of it. But other than that, it was pretty. It was it, it was uh, it was all right. It was good, and I'm curious to see. Uh, in the future, if that is if it is, um, and you know, and especially it was funny how uh, throughout the whole series, Brown each girl just wanted to see her panties, and by the end of the series, when the dog pretty much was speaking for him, and she got mad, and you know the typical thing, baka baka baka, and, you know thing, uh, Brown each girl ran off, and you see Noel's panties fly up when she was on her broom, I think, or they were riding dragons. If it's Red Witch, yeah, I'm kind of scratchy on it, but I'm pretty sure it's dragons. Because like I said before, they're mostly depending on it. 
Uh, I'm going to give it a, a exceptional sinking a bit into uh, into adequate, but it was it was pretty good. I would like to see in the future. Uh, I think they should do more show and tell instead of just exposition, exposition, exposition. Just you know, show and tell more because I want to be immersed. I want to see it. I want want to put myself into it instead of it just be given to me on a platter. Uh, in terms of world building, especially for fantasy. Well, that's all. That's it. This is pretty much all I got to say about it. I actually was waiting for a long time to do this review, but I never had time because you know I'm busy with life, doing other shit. So I couldn't really actually uh, do this review as soon as I could. But now that I got the chance to, I finally did it. What not? It took me a long time to have the sauce to do it, and I'm finally glad I finally got out of the way. Uh, Y'all can check out my DeviantArt account. Yeah, I make work and stuff. And <laughs> I know I usually don't review mangas because, you know, who reads? <laughs> but, you know, I may, I may be doing some more manga reviews in the future. I just invest myself into it because I'm planning to be a mangaka myself. I'm a, I'm a starving manga, a starving critic. And I actually want to actually really immerse myself in it. I actually want to do it in the future. And whatnot. That's why I got my Deviant Art that y'all should check out. I uploaded most uh, good work on it, so y'all can check it out anytime and whatnot. Uh, I'm really upload more shit on uh, X Sheriff that uh, that some people seem really like so much. Although it was like two people, but still they seem to actually really liked it and they thought it was funny and whatnot. So I guess I'll just keep upload. I, I, I got some new work in uh in, in stock. So. Any, uh, any of y'all who's uh, following me on DeviantArt or, or any of y'all who's going to go to it just to follow me on DeviantArt on any work I got, uh, feel free to catch it when I send it and whatnot what, and, and, and so forth. Uh, you know, I'm going to keep trying to do this because this is what I really like doing. This is my passion. If it's not making critique videos, then it's drawing or listening to music or masturbating, just any of that. But... Yeah, you know, or looking at gay porn, you know, just, you know, things that, you know, I do on a daily basis. <laughs> Can't believe I said <laughs> But, uh, but uh, seriously, man, I'll catch y'all later, man. Like, subscribe if you like the video. And shit, uh, give thumbs up if you like the content, if you like the video. Uh, click the notification bell so you know anytime I'm, I'm sending y'all videos. Like always, man, the data storm is watching y'all.